Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting butterfly birch tree and I'm going to be sipping on my iced tea and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, ultramarine blue, burnt umber, which I will call brown, deep yellow, green oxide, fluorescent orange, and Mars black. And of course, you can switch up those colors too if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number 10 round synthetic brush and I have a number one round synthetic brush. And I will refer to these as small, medium and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up as well if you'd like. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same type of paint and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's down there for you. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, so what we're going to do for the first step is we're going to be painting our sky. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are blue, white, and brown. And how I'm going to do this is I'm going to put a big soft sun up and through here with some white. I'll do the majority of my sky with some light blue. And as I get down towards my horizon line, I'm going to add a little bit of, I'll make it nice and light, but I'll add a little bit of brown into it. So it adds some warmth at the bottom of my sky. So what I'm going to first do is I'm going to pre-mix myself a kind of a medium to light blue, which I've magically done, <laughs> but I want to show you how I got to this. So what I've done with this is I've mixed about um, equal parts. Actually, I'm going to use my medium brush to mix my paint so that way I don't have to, um, I want my big brush to have just white on it when I start. So I'm just going to use my medium brush to mix paint. So how I did this was I took about equal parts of my white and my blue and mix them together. You can make yours a little bit lighter or darker than mine. It'll be a personal visual preference on your part. My The blue will get a little bit darker as it dries, not much, um, but a tiny bit, so you can just mentally plan for that. That's looking pretty good for me. So I'm just gonna kind of mix it in with my other little batch that I have here. And then once you've got the desired shade of blue that you want, what you'll wanna do if you used your big brush to mix, you'll just wanna wash and dry your big brush because we're gonna start with our sun, which is gonna be with white paint. So how I'm gonna do my sun is I'm going to be putting a big area up in through here and you can do it in um, a circular brush stroke or a left to right. It doesn't really matter. What you really just want to do is kind of in your head say, okay, I want my sun to splay out about maybe a little bit past my halfway point in my canvas and then almost over maybe a couple of inches away from the edge, the right edge, and then I'm coming down maybe about four three to four inches. Once you've got your area in there where you want that sun to be, what I'm gonna do is without washing my brush, I'm gonna pick up my blue paint, my light blue paint that we just made. Not a lot, just a little bit. 
and I'm going to come around the edges like this and then I will get those two sections to blend in together. I just wipe my brush off on my paper towel to make sure that I don't have too much paint on my brush as I'm going through this process. So I'm just kind of getting these two sections to blend in with one another before I travel too far away on my canvas. So this by by kind of controlling this blend and not going too far away, I will be able to make sure that it stays where I want it to stay without it splaying out too much. So I'm just kind of making sure that I've got this in through here, giving myself a nice soft edge around my sun. And then once I've got that on there, what I'm gonna do before I go any farther is I'm gonna give myself a marker as to how far down I want my, my sky to go. So I want it to come down about two thirds of the way down my canvas. So to know where that is, you can visually pick your halfway point, then go about halfway between there and the bottom of your canvas, somewhere here, and the third, uh, the, a third of the way up would be somewhere between those two. So somewhere in this vicinity, maybe about five to five and a half inches, then I can use my brush as a measuring tool to see how high up I went there. And then on the other side, I can just make a marker about the same height. That way it stops me from going any further than that. So now that I've got those, I'm gonna reload my brush with just blue, the light blue paint. And I'm gonna get the majority of this, the rest of the sky painted in with this light blue color that we created. I'm gonna go right up to the edge of where it's meeting my um, my gradient that I just created. And I'm just gonna be using mostly a left to right brush stroke, almost like a little crisscrossy type of brush stroke, but all the while just making sure that I don't um, get rid of my gradient that I put around my sun. And I'm just keep reloading my brush. In a minute here, I'm gonna start picking up white paint so I can get it to go a lighter as it goes down towards that horizon line. But I just wanna make sure that I've got this entire area covered in here, making sure that I go right up to that blended area and so it stays nice and natural looking. You might want your sun to have really crisp edges to it, but I just wanted this to really just look like it was illuminating the sky and having soft edges to it. So now that I'm at about this um, couple inches away from the bottom of my sky, or a few inches away from the bottom of my sky, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up, without washing my brush, I'm gonna pick up some of my white paint. And what's gonna happen is my sky will naturally get lighter and lighter as it goes down towards that horizon line. Just keep picking up white paint to almost release the blue that's on my brush in a nice natural way that'll provide me with this beautiful gradient as it's going down towards that horizon line. And you can bring it back up and down just to get these two areas to match or to blend in with one another. Still picking up just white paint as I come down towards this horizon. It's gonna get really, really light down here for a moment. And then once I've got it all on there and I'm happy with the way that it looks, I'm gonna add a touch of brown to that to the bottom of the sky. But first, I'm just kind of making sure I've got this the way that I want it because once I go into the brown, I'm not gonna look back <laughs> and I'm not gonna go back up into the rest of the sky. So I've got this pretty well. So without washing my brush, my paint is still a little wet at the bottom. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of brown and a little bit of white on my brush at the same time. And this is gonna provide me with atmospheric dimension at the bottom of my sky. You could do this with a little bit of yellow or the orange, whatever works for you. Just gonna put a little tiny bit of it down there. And then once you've got this all set, we will be using the same brush for the next step so you can wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the ground. So I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are black, green, brown, yellow, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna have it really dark down at the bottom, and it's gonna to get to be really light and bright up at the top. So it almost looks like it's a country meadow that's just going right off, way off into the distance and may just kind of almost 
disappear off in the distance a little bit. So I'm going to start at the bottom. I'm going to be using a dotting type of stippling technique. As I move my way towards the top, I'll be using, I'll progressively get into my lighter colors. So I'm going to start with black and green on my brush at the same time. And I'm just going to be sporadically kind of dotting the bottom of my canvas. Again, just black and green. And you can see I didn't do it 100% because I wanted to blend in and have some texture with the next color combination that I'm going to do. Which, without washing my brush, I'm going to pick up green and brown. So I have green and brown on my brush right now. And as I do this and I move my way up towards the top of my canvas, I do overlap these sections. So I'm going to overlap some of this green into the uh, the green and the brown into the darker black area, but I'm not over dotting or overworking it. So this way it maintains this textured type of look to it. If you sit in one spot and just dot 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 a thousand times in that one spot, what'll happen is it'll it'll look nice, but it'll just be really smooth looking and you might over blend it. So now what I'm going to do now that I've got it about this high is I'm going to um, pick up green and yellow. So I've got green and yellow on my brush. So green is the um, color that I am using as my kind of connector color that allows all of these um, these variations in tones to talk to one another. I'm utilizing the green as my as my common denominator through the process. So now that I'm about this far, I've got maybe about an inch or two left over. I don't want to um, have too much black or darkness on my brush as I'm getting up towards the lighter area. So I'm actually going to just take my brush and give it a good squeeze in my paper towel. You could certainly wash your brush, but I still like to have little bits of remnants on the brush as I'm moving into the lighter areas, just so, again, so they all talk well together. So now what I'm going to be picking up is green, a little bit of green, a tiny bit of yellow, I don't want too much yellow, and white. And this is going to allow me to get this upper region of my, of my land really, really light and bright. I'm going to utilize white at the very tippy top, but right now it is, I'm picking up white with just a teeny tiny bit of yellow and a teeny tiny bit of green. So that way I do still have that transition from the dark up to the light. And you can see I back into the previous section so that way I've got both colors talking to each other. And now what I'm gonna do without washing my brush, I'm gonna pick up white and I'm going to get this upper area to be really, really nice and, and light and maybe kind of maneuver my brush a little bit left to right to give myself almost an out of focus appearance right at the tippy top. So just with the um, dirty brush plus white on my brush right now, getting this upper region to just kind of be really soft and almost out of focus up at the top. I'll finesse it a little bit more in a second here, but right now just kind of getting this um, lightness on up here. I just picked up a tiny bit of yellow to get this left side a little bit more um, with a little tiny bit more color. And so that's looking pretty good to me, but now I wanna just kind of finesse it just a little bit so I have that bright, real brightness up at the top of the canvas or of the land and it kind of just maneuvers and makes its way into that sky area and you could even put a little bit in the sky if you wanted to and then once you feel like you've got it all nice and and transitioned as much as you want to you can certainly come back and do a little bit more dotting if you felt the need to we will put some additional um, grass on later uh, some focal grass so if it's not perfect at this point, no need to worry, but we are going to be utilizing our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put this large brush away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what I'm gonna be doing for the next step is I'm gonna be doing the base coat of the birch tree. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, and white. and I do recommend that you make sure that your canvas is dry wherever you plan on putting your tree. So this is that time where you get to take that extra long break if you'd like to. 
You can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry, or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. So how I'm gonna be doing this is I'm gonna be using those three colors on my brush pretty much at the same time. I am going to be, I want my tree, the base coat to be kind of like a, a medium to light gray, but I do want the right side of the tree to be a little bit lighter because that's where the light source, the sun is, and the left side to be a little bit darker. I'm gonna have my tree split in two at the base. Um, but you can certainly just have one tall tree or you can make your split in different ways. There's many different varieties of birch trees, so you can have fun with it. So what I'm going to first start, or how I'm going to start my approach, is I'm going to be using white with a touch of brown on my brush. This is just going to kind of get that lighter, warm tone going, and then I can adjust it after that. I'm going to have it pretty wide at the bottom, so I'm going to have mine maybe... I would say about this wide at the bottom. I'm not really concerned of how it's going to meet the land because we're going to be putting on some um, additional grass to to help with that in a little while. So as I come up my my tree, I am going to have these going straight to the top of the um, canvas. But when I say straight, it doesn't have to be like a telephone pole straight. It can certainly have a little bit of wiggle to it. It can have um, a little bit of bend on the side. So don't feel like it has to be super duper straight um, the whole way. And I'm just kind of continue to pick up some white and some brown. I've got um, this the right side of my, my split tree is gonna be maybe a little bit wider than my left side, but I'm just getting this um, the form of it on or the shape of it on, so I can have that side in through there. Again, just picking up some white and brown. I think I'm gonna have my tree split right about in through here. So this is gonna be the left side of the tree in through here. And I like my trees to be a little bit wider at the base and then get a little bit more narrow as they go up. That to me just um, resembles a, a pretty natural looking tree. I'm gonna have my top somewhere in through here and I think I'm gonna have this side bending a little bit. So I'm gonna have this one coming out maybe a little bit over here and then just bending back into this one. And of course yours can be formulated and shaped in a much different way than mine. That's gonna to be totally up to you. Just getting this on here before I start tweaking with my colors and getting um, that shadowy area on the left, but let me just get these in place. Once I've got them in place, I am going to put a couple of branches on. Not many, to because to me, birch trees, they have some branches, um, but they're very skinny and they, they don't, take up a lot of that main trunk area. They're more high up in the tree. So I'm gonna have maybe one or two kind of coming out the sides in through here. Plus I need a place for my butterflies to kind of come out of. So I'm gonna make sure that I have a couple of these branches just so we, we have places for leaves and for our butterflies. So a few coming in this direction, maybe they can come out and branch off in through there. And again, just using the white and the brown. And you can see as I'm doing this, I am getting some lighter and dark areas naturally because I'm utilizing both of these colors on my brush at the same time. So now that I've got a good assortment of branches and I've got the tree kind of where I want, I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of black paint on my dirty brush. And this is going to allow me to get a little bit of a shadow type of area on the back side of the tree, which is gonna be on the left side of the tree. I'm not gonna go full on full detail right now. What I'm really just looking to do is start the process by giving this dimensional element um, during this base coat process. So for me, trees have lots of texture and lots of lumps and bumps. And even on a tree like this, that is seemingly pretty smooth. And um, when you look at it, it looks like it's a pretty smooth tree. It still has to me all of these different um, variations and gradients about it. So I like to, on this first coat, start the, the process of the um of the it, the 
textural information. So I'm just putting this little bit of darkness on this left hand side and then we are going to be utilizing our small brush for the next step. So once you've got your tree in place, you've got it a little bit darker on the left hand side and if you didn't accomplish that darkness on the left hand side, don't worry about it. We'll be able to give you a little bit of guidance on how to create a little bit of that as we do the details later. And then we will be using uh, our small brush for the next step. So you can just put the medium brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first layer of our butterflies. I'm gonna be using my small brush and the colors that I'm using are yellow, white, and orange. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna be doing a yellow base for the butterflies and then we'll add a little orange accent onto them. Um, these butterflies that I'm doing are loosely modeled upon the uh, very familiar butterfly in my area which is the monarch butterfly. So we'll be using similar colors but you can certainly bend, twist, and shape your butterflies to however you'd like. So what I'm going to first do, I know that I've got a blue background on where some of my butterflies are going to be going and I want my butterflies to look yellow. So if I was to use this yellow which is very translucent on top of this blue, I'd end up with green butterflies. So what I, I'm gonna do to avoid that happening is I'm gonna add a little bit of white into some of my yellow. What this is gonna do is it'll change the opacity of it and make it so it's not so see-through and it'll allow that yellow to look yellow as opposed to green because it won't necessarily counteract with the blue underneath. It might a little bit, but we'll have a building process that will help us um, prevent future um, color changing. So I've got my light yellow that I'm going to be starting this off with. I'm going to be doing um, quite a few butterflies in focus coming out of the tree. I'm going to have my biggest one right about here. So they'll be a medium size. It's going to get to a couple of big ones in through here and then they're going to get smaller and smaller. When I go into my smaller and smaller ones, they're be going to be in essence just kind of polka dots, but we'll put some realistic shape to the ones that are going to be closer in focus. So I'm going to start with my first one. My first one is going to be the biggest somewhere in through here. So I'm going to be doing some very generic kind of um, butterfly wing shapes. We'll be putting more detail on it later, but this is gonna be kind of in through here. I'm gonna have this one come in like this and then maybe a little shape like that. And of course, you can certainly make yours into whatever style of butterfly that you want to. It's your butterflies. You can really have a lot of fun with this. You can use different colors. You can use, you know, many different methods or shapes to these. You, maybe yours end up being more like little birds or more butterfly. It can really be whatever you want it to be. So this is a real generic um, position of the butterfly and you can certainly put the, a lot of them in this position, but I'm gonna, I want mine to kind of look like they're flying around. So I'm gonna have some in different positions as well. So I think I'm gonna have one up in through here that's gonna be going in this direction. It's gonna be a little bit smaller cause we're seeing just the, maybe it's a little bit farther away. So I'm just giving this one a little bit of the, the upper wings and then the bottom wings. So this is a similar position, but it's a little bit farther away and tilted. Maybe I have, I'll put one in through here that is, um, we're gonna see the side of it. So maybe I've got this wing in through here where we're gonna see the side of it and then I see this one over here where we see the side of it and then maybe we have the little bottom parts. I'll put the um, the body of the um, butterfly on in a little while but right now just putting the wings in place. I think I'm gonna have a nice big one in through here. So again, if you wanna see the side of it, I'm gonna just see the side of this one like the we're just seeing a little bit of a profile of it. And maybe this one, I'm gonna see more of this side of the wing. So based on the angle that you're seeing the butterfly in, you might see the full, um, oops, I have a little, a little insect. <laughs> you might see the full wing or you might just see a little portion of the wing. So you can really have a lot of fun with this. I, um, I, you can also look up 
just flying like a flock of flying butterflies and that uh, on the internet you can look that up that gives you a visual reference of different positions that you can put them in so I'm thinking this is my top wing this is my bottom wing I've got another wing coming out the other side I am leaving a little bit of a visual um, separation between one side to the next just so when I go to do my details I'll have that information that I can work from maybe I've got one that's flying out of my tree in through here so maybe again maybe we're just going to see the little side of it and oftentimes I, you'll, you'll see that some of mine look exactly alike from another position, but I try and um, get them to be at little different angles. Maybe they're coming out at, um, you know, a, 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 little, a little different. I try anyways, but sometimes it doesn't work out. Sometimes our brains just want to make one specific kind of a butterfly or a bird or something like that. So I'm just trying to give myself little different angles. Maybe I've got one who's coming out the top of my tree and maybe he's coming out flying that way. So just have fun with where you want to put them in what directions that you want them to go in again they can have different um, styles to them these ones are going to just kind of emerge from out inside the the middle of the tree so i'm really not concerned about making those too terribly detailed i'm going to do a couple other very visible ones um, coming out over here and you can see I'm just really starting with my with my yellow right now this one again I'm gonna be just seeing the side of it and in a minute I will start to add a little bit of the orange which will give us a nice um, a nice alternative alternative color to them this one's gonna be maybe a little more rogue and 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 flying in a little bit different direction and just giving it a little bit a little bit of shape on those on those wings maybe I've got another one coming over in this direction and you can see I had my my one big focal one and then all these other ones just kind of are almost just little accent kind of butterflies as they're as they're making their way towards the sunshine and as I get towards these smaller ones you're gonna you're gonna notice really soon that <laughs> I'm not gonna have a whole lot of detail on them just really maybe a couple of X's here maybe a little um, little V there and as I work my way up into this swirl I'm going to start making little polka dots I'll do little polka dots in between here and again just using my yellow right now but this little swirl Swirl is what's going to give the um, information of the direction that the flock of butterflies is going in. So this is just really polka dots. I'm going to make more of these polka dots as they are making their way towards the main area of the butterflies. And maybe we've got a couple that are coming out and, you know, just spreading their wings a little bit more. Maybe we've got little little ones off in the distance in through here and just a couple of little, the hints of them in through here. Now, without washing my brush, I'm just going to wipe it off on my paper towel. I'm going to pick up some of my orange. And this orange is going to make its way into my butterfly wings. Uh, these type of butterflies, they have more, to me, what I was seeing is they have more orange on the bottom portion of their wings. So I just put a little bit at the bottom portion and then just rub it up into the main area of that of that wing. You might be using a different color orange, you might be using something that's more vibrant or a little bit more subtle, totally um, freestyle it. It does not have to be exactly as mine is. Just taking a little bit of that orange and rubbing it towards the bottom of some of those wings. And again, we're going to be putting lots of detail on these later, so you don't really need to do a whole heck of a lot. Just something on here that's going to give that color variation to the to the wings. So just wherever you had the little bottom, if you can identify it, great. And then if you want, you can blend it up into the main area of that of that particular wing and again the the um, ones that are a little bit more in focus these ones that are closer to us they have you'll have a little bit more information on those ones but then uh, when you get to the tiny ones it's really all about just giving the visual impression of um, what's happening on these butterflies so don't don't be consumed with the detail of it it's really just we're giving 
little visual cues to the um, to the viewer and then once you've got the bottom portion of the wings that you think that you can see then you're just gonna make like the yellow a whole bunch of little polka dots so I'm gonna do little polka dots maybe the impression of you know additional little butterflies off in the distance we'll be using um, additional white in this background sparkly stuff when we do the final details on the butterflies but right now just using my orange making some orange dots and then when you've got enough on here that's making you visually happy we are going to be utilizing the same small brush for the next step, just getting some more little little tiny dots way off in the distance, gonna go and trail off in through here. And then I'm gonna wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our tree trunk and branches. So I'm gonna be using my small brush. You could, I suppose, use your medium brush for some of this if you wanted to, but I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm gonna be using black, brown, and white. And how I'm gonna be doing this is I'm going to be putting my birch marks all along my tree with um, black. And then I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna add my chaotic kind of details with pieces of bark kind of peeling away because that's why we see the dark marks on a bark tree is because there has been bark that was peeled away. So these trees, again, there's lots of different types of them. So don't feel that your marks have to be exactly as mine. Mine are going to be really just um, intuitive and I'm just going to have fun doing it. Um, I have done birch trees with many classes before and the less you concentrate on your marks going in exactly the perfect spot, the more natural it will look. Um, so just kind of understand that Mother Nature doesn't put them in order on here. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, I'm going to be using black first. I am going to be taking a, a dot or two of water and thinning out my black paint. So it's almost like an ink consistency so I can spread it really well and I can have some um, cleaner edges if I want to. So a little bit of watered down black paint. And how I'm going to do this is in a very chaotic kind of way. So I'm going to just take my brush and what I like to do is kind of chaotically make some uh, small marks and then make some of those bigger. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I've got my black on my brush and I'm just going to say, okay, well, I'm just going to kind of dot my, my way up and down my tree, maybe a little bit on my branches. And that gives me a, without thinking too hard, a starting point as to where my marks are going to go. I think I do want another one down and through here. So once I've got them in place, now I just can kind of build them into something that looks a little bit more believable. So I wanna bring some of them all the way to the edge. So this is a good one to bring all the way to the edge. And then I'm just gonna kind of um, rough up the um, the edges of that particular mark. So maybe I've, maybe I've got, this one is gonna come up in between these two tree, these two, um, branches of the tree so something like that maybe it comes over in this way and if at any time you can give a little bit of a curve to any of your birch marks that also will make it look a little bit more natural and it's going to tell the viewer that the tree has that curve to it so that helps out too to make some of these look a little bit more natural so i'm going to go ahead and just kind of wiggle my brush a little bit in order to give some of those this looks a little bit like a leaf so i'm gonna i will make that into something else that works better and then i'm just going to work my way up wherever i have a little bit of a mark I'm going to decide if I want to even do anything to it, or maybe I want to add a little mark next to it. So I've got a mark here. Maybe this one kind of goes up and maybe it splays out a little bit. I got a little mark here, little mark here. And again, I'm just kind of messing up those edges, letting happen what naturally kind of happened as I was just flying through down that tree to, to get some various marks on it. And again, that allows me to just be we just let happen what's going to happen and that's organically to me makes for a better um a, a better display or um uh p placement for these particular lines and then again you can certainly add 
any additional ones if you want. So that's looking pretty good to me. Maybe this one's got to go a little bit more like that. That's looking pretty good to me. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add my final details onto my tree. So how, I, how I'm going to do this is, again, I know that I want the left side to be darker, which I already have a pretty good um, shadow on this left hand side. If I wanted it any darker, I could certainly do that. But what I like to do is I'm going to, I didn't wash my brush. I'm just going to pick up a little bit of white and brown. And then what I can do at the top of my marks, my birch marks, I can put a light spot, which will in essence make it look like that bark is peeling away. So if I have my light color on my brush right now, maybe a little bit more white on my brush, I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way so you can see what I'm doing here. So a little bit of white right in through there and then just blend up that whatever it was on your brush, oops, I just got some in my sky, um, whatever was on your brush, that what, or if you needed to, you could pick up a little bit more brown and put a little bit more of a darker area above it. But if you can get a little bit of a light spot at the top or at a portion of the um, top of these birch marks, that's going to make them look like it's sticking out a little bit and that it, um, it has been peeled away. Maybe if I put my hand over here, it'll, it'll be better for visual purposes. And then once I get that light mark on there, I just take my brush and kind of blend it up into the, the area above it. And that again, like I said, will allow you to have that almost three dimensional 3D look to it if you have that little bit of the um, of the light area up above. And you can add, you know, do a couple at a time if you want to. And wipe your brush off, take that little bit of light area and then just kind of pull it up into the tree above it. And you can make this look really dramatic. You can make it look really subtle, whatever works for you visually is totally fine. And then once I have these on here, what I'll do is I will make sure that the highlight on the right side of the tree is nice and bright or if I want any more texture to my trees. So I'm gonna add some white paint onto my brush and just make sure that I have this right hand side of the tree as light as I want it. So you can, I mean, it, it, it is in essence supposed to be a white tree, so it would make sense to have at least a few areas of it really light and bright, especially since we have a nice, beautiful, sunshiny day happening. So once I get that, that area on the right hand side really nice and light, I like to just take my brush and just kind of rub it until it runs out of paint that allows me to have that um, really again another organic type of um, look to it as it is blending into the rest of the bark on the tree. I'm going to on this tree on this trunk here I'm going to put a nice bright white highlight over on that right side because that's where my that's where my sun is so it makes sense to have that light area over in through there and if your tree changes shape on you like mine is, that's great. Just embrace it. Let happen what's going to happen. Wiggle your brush and, and release those colors and that's going to give you some nice look to your bark. If you needed to do any more darkness on the left side, you certainly could. And if you feel that you want to add any more dimension on the inside of your birch marks without washing your brush, if you just pick up a little bit of brown paint and wiggle in a little bit of um, a dimensional almost like we can see part of the inside of the tree in through there so it's not so black that too will be another way to make it look a little bit more natural and then you just keep fiddling with these little marks until you feel that you've got a nice natural looking tree if you need to do any more with your highlights or your shadows feel free to do so and then we are going to be utilizing our uh, we're going to use our big brush for the next step. So once you get this done, you can put your small brush away, take out your large brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to put some 
grass details on the ground and we're going to do the first layer of our leaves in the tree. So I'm going to be using my large brush. I'm going to be using green, yellow, and white and probably a little bit of brown as well. So what I'm really looking to do on the ground here is add little bits of grass that are in the foreground so they look like they're more in focus and kind of get the bottom of this tree to look like it's hidden a little bit or a little bit more natural. So I'm going to start with a little bit of green. I think I'm going to go for some brown. I'm going to start with my darker stuff first. And you don't need a lot, just a little bit. I'm going to just kind of get the bottom of this tree to have a little bit of wild grass in through here. Right now I'm going to pick up some yellow, green, and a, a little bit of white. So yellow, green, and a little bit of white. And what I'm going to do is I am just really looking to give myself just these little tips of grass to make it look like we've got a little bit in the foreground here, like we're closer to the um, the the ground or this ground is closer to us than that stuff off in the distance. So I'm really just kind of using the corner of my brush to get myself a little bit of wild grass look around these edges here. I just picked up a little bit more of the dark grass so I can get a little bit more life going on around the bottom of this tree and through here. And you really don't have to do much. I actually am going to pick up a tiny bit of black paint because to me this side is in the shadow of the sun so I just want to have some little dark pieces of grass on this side too. So a little bit of black will help me to get that uh, silhouetted kind of look of the grass over on this back side of the tree. And then again you, you don't really need to do much. If you wanted to do more than that feel free to do so. Maybe. Um, be a little bit more brightness on my grass tips here so just a little bit of that yellow and white and again you don't have to do much but I'm feeling like I want a little bit of life in this grass that is um, coming directly from the sun and getting um, these little tips for us to to see a little bit more so that's that's helping me sell that story that we are we are really close to this grass and it might be being illuminated a little bit by by that sun and then just get it to kind of trail off into the distance. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize that same thought process in the, um, if I can ever stop my, I like painting wild grass just for the record. So if ever you see I'm on the wild grass step, know that I have a difficult time stopping. <laughs> so now that I've got this almost done, I guess I'm done as much as I need to. Um, I'm going to go up to the top of my tree. I want it to, um, birch trees are really tall and really slender and they don't necessarily have tons and tons of leaves on the top so I really want this to look like the butterflies are you know coming out but the bulk of the leaves would be kind of out of out of sight so I want to start with a little bit of green and brown just to give myself a little bit of a foundation of the leaves before I put the brighter ones on later. So this is just going to give me that bit of information um, that that we'll be able to build upon with the leaves that are going to be similar color to our um, to our butterflies. So as I come over into the areas where my butterflies actually are, I just want to make sure that I don't um, cover them 100%. I will be putting more details on top of them, but I do want them to feel like they're coming out of the, the leaves themselves. So I'm just kind of dotting in a little bit of leaves here and there to just give myself that foundation. You can put some in front of your trunk too. That makes that look nice and natural as well. And I think that's all I'm going to be doing in this vicinity. Maybe a teeny tiny bit down in through here, but again, not much because I want those the butterflies are going to be the star of the show. And then once you've got this done, we're going to switch brushes to our small brush so you can just get that out and get ready. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish our butterflies. I'm going to use my small brush. I'm going to be using black and white predominantly, but I might use some of my yellow and orange as well. So what I'm going to first do is I'm going to um, 
put my black areas on my butterflies. So that's going to consist of any bodies that I'm going to see with the antennas and the little legs. And then these particular style of butterflies have black outlines to their wings with the little veins going through them. So I'm going to tackle that first. So I'm using my small brush and watered down black paint. So again, nice and thin, like a nice ink consistency that will help you to get smooth kind of lines. And I'll tackle my big one first so you can kind of see where I'm headed with that. So I'm gonna decide where I want my body. And just know these are meant to just be fun. I'm not going for any photorealistic um, options here. I'm just having fun with some carefree butterflies. So if you want to make yours more realistic, feel free to do so. But I'm just going to go through this process and have a whole bunch of fun. I'm going to outline these wings, bringing this black paint up a little bit into the center. They have um, a bigger kind of area up in this top region so you can make that a little bit wider if you wanted to and then I'm going to just kind of bring some marks in through here to make it look like the little veins of the butterfly wing and of course again I'm just enjoying the process with mine I'm not making it anything super um, photorealistic so you can do the same and have fun with it if you want to or really go in for some fine-tuned detail. And again, I've only got a couple that are really going to call for um, this more fine detailed type of look to it because I've only got a couple that are are this close. But you, if you have some that are you know a lot that are closer than this, you can certainly um, go for that a little bit more. So then um, on this little guy here, I think I'm going to have a little body like this. And some of my bodies are going to show and some are not the where the um, head and the antennas are. So that's going to be depending on what position you have yours in. And I'll be putting some little white polka dots on the edges of these in a, in a minute as well. I, I'm right now just kind of concentrating on my bigger ones, um, my, my bigger butterflies. This one I feel like I would see my body coming out in, in this direction. So I'm going to put my little body like this, maybe a little couple of um, antennas, maybe a couple of little legs. But again, no, not necessary. But if you feel like you would see them, great. And I, I feel like this is going to be the side of this particular um, wing. So I'm going to just kind of add little bits of information in through there. We see a big part of this one. So I'm gonna, oops, that one's gonna grow a little bit on me. And if yours grows like mine, just let it happen. That's the beautiful part about this. It doesn't have to be exactly as mine. So something like that works for me. I think I've got a couple more up and through here where I would see my body. So I've got this one my little body in through there. And again, you might find as you're going through this process that all of a sudden your butterflies morph into a unique, a unique style of butterfly that is all your own, your own. So again, don't feel the pressure of having it look exactly like this style butterfly. I'm even just expressing my creative license here too. These do not look exactly like the real um, monarch butterfly, but I'm enjoying the process and that's that's all that matters. So I'm just using that style of butterfly as a loose interpretation of what I'm creating for these. So again, you can certainly, um, if purple is your favorite color, maybe you've got some beautiful purple butterflies. I'm gonna do these ones up in my tree. And, and again, in my tree, I know that um, I'm gonna have some additional leaves and stuff that are gonna be taking up a lot of this um, area or at least kind of taking the focal point or the attention off of some of the butterflies. So I'm not um, concerned about 
uh, again, 100% detail in here, just really trying to give the viewer the impression or the information that it's the same style of butterfly up here as it is going to be going off into the distance, trying to keep my hand out of wet paint. Let's see if I can be successful when it comes to that. This guy's, he's, he's, he's coming it out at, at a different angle <laughs> so I'm just gonna kind of roll with whatever's happening in this in this one in through here and again it might look real it might not it's just giving the impression of these cool little little butterflies and kind of an inspirational magical type of, of uh, experience that is happening with them and just giving myself these last little couple ones in the tree. Right now I'm just kind of using quick gestural marks so I can get that, those little black details in through there. Then I have a couple more over in through here where I'm gonna actually see a little bit of the detail. So now that I've got my rhythm, I'm gonna, I kinda go a little bit faster now that I kinda see what I want to do with them, giving myself these little kind of wispy veins throughout that throughout that wing of sorts. This little guy here is going to get a body. He's going to get his little black marks on the wing. And again, as they get smaller and smaller, it you know, if you can kind of just let loose a little bit and let your brush just kind of add these wispy little marks, that's going to help to um, just give your give the the little detailed impression of them without having to really go full on. And again, right in through here, I know that I've just got these little tiny ones. I want the viewer to see that they got the little bit of black on them, but I really maybe just a couple little swipes here and there. And now I'm going to take my black and to give the illusion that there's. Um, that these little marks that we made back here are also butterflies. I'm putting little tiny black marks on some of these dots that we have off in the distance. So again, just keep trying to maintain that illusion that these are in fact the little tiny butterflies going way off in the distance. And once I've got the black done, I'm gonna wash and dry, <clears throat> excuse me, my brush, and I'm gonna put the little white polka dot marks on these butterflies. So just washing and drying my brush, picking up white. So these particular butterflies have little white polka dots throughout the um, exterior black outline of their wings. So I am just gonna, again, give some of that detail, especially on these ones that are the largest and the closest to us. And then when I get to the smaller ones, I'm just going to give a real loose interpretive um, and idea of the information to it. So again, I've got these ones where I see a good amount of the, the black marking on them. So I'm going to give some distinct little polka dots that I can. And I'm just using white with the tip of my brush. So that's going to give me... Um, these little tiny polka dots and you might not be able to get them on all of them But again, it's just those those ones that you really can can see the most that would make a, a Good amount of sense to to put some of those dots on there I'm gonna get some over in through here and my brush at this point these little guys over here I'm just gonna give them a couple of little dots because I, I can't, they're just too tiny. <laughs> and so I'm just going to give them what I can and what I, you know, whatever information works is fantastic. And wherever I have these ones on the left hand side too, that I want to tackle. So I'm going back over to this left hand side. I was afraid to put my hand in white paint. <laughs> so I'm going to, I have that white on my brush. Really, I'm concentrating more on the little upper wings of these small ones because I know that's where we would see it the most on the on the real life um, butterflies so but if you can get them in elsewhere awesome if not no worries and then once I've got the white on the um, on the wings what I'm gonna do is I will again put more of the white polka dots 
throughout the trail of the butterflies going off in the distance. So just trying to give myself again the impression that these are in fact the same kind of butterflies just with some little impressionistic white polka dots along the way trying to go in straight with my brush so if my hand gets in the way I apologize so that works in through there and then again just some little white polka dots off in the distance is going to give me the visual information that these in fact off in the distance are smaller versions of these beautiful butterflies that we're seeing close up so you can have fun with this make it as much as you want if you want more brightness off in the distance you could certainly pick up some of the um, orange and white or yellow and white whatever works for you in order to get the illusion that um, that you will want or uh, that you're going for and once you've got it all done just you know step back for a minute look at it from a distance see if there's anything more that you want to add to see if it would uh, make it any more lively for you and then we have another step that we're going to be doing with the large brush after this so once you've got your beautiful butterflies on here you can put this small brush away take out your large brush fiddle with it all you want and then get ready for the next step all right so what i'm going to be doing for the next step is i'm going to finish the leaves on my tree so I'm going to be using my big brush, but you could certainly, if you want more little distinct leaves that maybe resemble the butterflies a little bit more, you could certainly use your medium brush. But I'm really just looking to give the colors that I have in my butterflies, I want those to be emulated a little bit in my leaves as well. So I don't want to go hog wild, just want to add a little bit of extra life into the leaves. So I'm going to start with a little bit of my orange. And if the orange is too much for you, you can certainly use it with a little bit of brown. If you want it to be a little bit darker, you could do that. But I'm gonna start with just a little bit of orange and if I feel like I wanna go a little bit darker, I certainly will. And I'm really just looking to give just this little hint of these colors in my tree along with that green. I'm not really looking to do much of anything other than to carry that similar color that's in the composition into these leaves. The leaves on a birch tree can, as they're turning into their autumn colors, they can be anywhere from a dark rusty color to a vibrant yellow color which is the most common so I'm going to just use a little bit of this to give the implication of those colors so I'm not going to wash my brush I'm going to pick up some of that yellow that was mixed with the white so this way I have that um, that yellow that has a little bit of a good opacity in it and then again just going to kind of dot it in a little bits here and there just and I don't want it to look like my butterfly is like I've painted around the butterfly so if you need to or want to pop uh, like a little bit of these leaves in front of the butterfly great that way that'll look like it's almost the butterflies are almost emerging from the leaves so feel free to to do that a little bit too and then again not doing a whole heck of a lot maybe these yellow ones I think even these yellow ones are looking nice and pretty but I again not doing much if you want to do more than this feel free to do so but we have one tiny little step left to go and it's going to be with the small brush so once you've got your beautiful leaves in your tree fiddle with it all you want if you want more put more if you want less put less and then we're going to utilize our hmm, maybe a little white too and pick up a little bit of white too I'm putting a little bit of white on these edges over by my son so yeah that's looking pretty tiny bit tiny bit of white to just pop these these leaves out just a little bit more and if you felt that you wanted to you know enhance any of these butterflies anymore feel free to do so and then we're going to be switching to our small brush for the next step so you can just get ready all right so we are on to the final step 
This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I'm going to use my small brush. I'm using black paint, and I usually sign mine bottom left or bottom right. I think I'm going bottom left on this one with some black paint. I'm going to hide it kind of in my grass over here. I sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like for your identifying mark to be is totally fine. And that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a very pretty inspirational image, and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.